Hey, welcome back to Cheating Wife, the best channel for cheating stories. Like and subscribe to the channel for cheating stories like this. She cheated on me twice and I miss my cheating ex and her family but I know I shouldn't. Myself, 28 year old man, and my girlfriend, 26 female. So we began dating in May of 2017. I got a gut sense two months into the relationship that she didn't seem completely invested in the relationship. I had my doubts because of how discreet she was about introducing people to her family and how careful she was with her phone. She never uploaded any photos of us on her Instagram account, and it took her a long time to eventually share photos of us on her Facebook page slash say we were official. I almost had to beg her to show us off. But during a Thanksgiving gathering with her family, I noticed her phone kept ringing as she was cooking, she always kept it on silent. I double check it since we promised to share passcodes at the start of our relationship. Remember that, I saw someone messaging her on Snapchat. When I check, it's some man inquiring how her day is going and how much he misses her. When I inquired who it was, she responded it was just a buddy. I filed a conversation aside for later. A few days later, she's staying over at my house when her phone rings early in the morning, light on the phone. When I look at it, it's the same man. I pick up the phone to check whether it's the friend. I use her passcode to unlock her phone. I notice they've been conversing for a long time. They only speak rarely during the day. He sneaks in some banter about how much he misses her body, inquires about her and I, and expresses a want to see her again after supposedly seeing her lately. I collected screenshots of their chat before awakening her and confronting her. She instantly becomes defensive and angry that I looked into her phone and invaded her privacy. When she handed me her access code, I told her I couldn't intrude on her privacy. I ask her who he is and why I have suspicions based on how she has been behaving. She continued denying who he was and referring to him as a friend until I ordered her to quit f lying. She says they used to date and had, but it didn't work out. She tells me she only chatted to him because I worked nights and she had nobody to speak to. He isn't always, she says, so why did you select him? So I never told her about the screenshots because I intended to show her family but didn't but I flipped out on her for lying to me and talking to a old buddy with whom she used to lie. I reminded her that we committed at the start of the relationship not to speak to anybody we used to like slash be with, we're currently talking to, or wanted to talk slash be with. I warned her she'd made a tremendous mistake and that things wouldn't be simple to rectify. After that trust was visibly damaged, I told her what she needed to do to re-establish my faith in her, which was to show me her phone from time to time and make me feel desired and valued. She was upset because she had to display her phone. Fast forward a few years, and there have been more ups than downs. Things seem to be improving. But only because we swept it all under the rug. I'm bothered by the fact that she hasn't done what I requested of her to assist me create trust in her. She kept changing her password and even claimed at one point, what's the purpose of checking in my phone when I can simply change the name on my phone and nobody would know. She would also make me feel uneasy by saying stuff like I've never dated anybody under 5 feet 11 inches, I'm 5 feet 6 inches and she's 5 feet 3 inches. I had several clues that she was emotionally cheating, lying, being deceptive, and so forth. Things began to spiral, and she went out to a bar on a weekend after I brought up the same problem of wanting her to help me establish confidence in her because she believes that just telling me that her man friends are just friends and that I should trust her is sufficient. Not recognizing that her words are no longer sufficient. After a few days, she contacts me to say she has something to tell me. She texts me that she recently kissed someone else. She supposedly went to a pub and kissed slash danced with some man. When she discovered it wasn't me, she pushed him away. Another falsehood, most likely. I blow up her phone trying to get her to answer and she has the audacity to text me that she's on the phone. Who else is more essential to speak to than me? Since she still lived with her parents, I texted her mom that she was cheating on me. I sent her a screenshot of her daughter telling me she cheated at the bar. My ex is upset that I'm telling her family what she's done wrong, Yet she felt comfortable telling her mother and sister about when we argued and shared our business. I instruct her to start chatting when she eventually picks up a video call. She expresses her loneliness despite the fact that I visited her almost every weekend, sent flowers to her workplace at random, bought her lunch and drove an hour to dine with her, and so on. So she isn't alone. While I chew her out. She has a pathetic expression on her face. I questioned why she would do all of this knowing that I have trust difficulties and that we are in a long-distance relationship. Why would you do such a thing? My impression was that she didn't care and just wanted to get rid of me. She just contacted me on my birthday, but she treated me to supper. She said that she believed it would be beneficial. I chose couples therapy. I've read a lot of articles and books on relationships. 
I even volunteered to bring them and read and perform the things they mentioned together. She still refused. When I questioned, she replied she read articles but never showed them to me. As a result, another falsehood is very probable. I began looking for therapists and found one in her neighborhood. I paid for us to go, and she only attended three sessions, according to the therapist she was icy and abrasive. She didn't want to speak about herself, but she was prepared to point out your flaws. She never returned, claiming to be enraged by the sessions. She departed in 2020 after we spent Christmas with our families. Because I was still looking for love. I also discovered that she had resumed messaging with the same man I had caught her texting years before. I guess I was weak because she texted me on January 3rd to go. Fast forward a few months of messaging since we were both unable to let go of the connection. I ceased talking to her for a few weeks before ultimately breaking down and asking how she's been. She claims she is receiving her own space and will be relocating the following day. Mai, who is still in love with her, suggested I could assist her relocate. I arrived the following day, and her family is overjoyed to see me. I should have put her on the spot then and told her family about her infidelity, even though her mother is already aware of it and avoids bringing it up too much because it affects my daughter and I don't want her to be angry at me. However, you will not hold her responsible for her acts. I assist her with her relocation and even accompany her shopping for items for her new apartment. I attempt to speak a little bit in the hopes that we can have a clear heart-to-heart sit-down. Nothing. But we continue to speak as if nothing had changed between us. She'd been racing around for days trying to keep her apartment in order while getting little sleep. I go even farther out of my way to compile a grocery list and purchase her food and wine to stock her fridge. I'd want to sit down with her and chat about all we've gone through. I did, however, allow her to sleep. The next month, she tells me in a lengthy text message that we should move on since it's best for us. Oh, she never, ever apologized for anything. The only time she apologized was in her final text, when she said, I realize I made some errors. That was the only time she apologized in 2.8 years. She claims she has had plenty of time to reflect on what we've gone through. While, in fact, I knew about her new person she was talking to long before she posted it on Facebook, and I knew she was talking to someone when I was helping her move. I apologize for the lengthy rant. It still stings knowing I'd done all of this and loved her so much. Our family got along beautifully and adored us all. On their eyes, we were a power couple. Best buddies. The first young lady I wanted to marry. We discussed baby names, wedding plans, and future trips, among other things. It's strange how you can blame me for calling you out on your BS and attempting to keep you accountable. But then you go and accuse me of being insecure or controlling. She used to claim that since I was a policeman, interrogating her was like an interrogation, so absolutely, I'm going to question you if you've lied, cheated, or been extremely secretive and deceptive. I simply wanted the person who claimed she loved me to mean it and strive hard to be honest and correct her faults. I am aware of my shortcomings, and I apologize to her and the therapist for the role I played, but I am also aware that I attempted to rectify the situation. Her mother and brother-in-law are the only people who have seen the screenshots and are aware of the reality. As I have said, I apologize for the rage. She moved on quickly and makes me feel as though she never loved me and it was all a ruse since her family did. All I can think about is how much I miss her and her family. Everything seems so natural. Obviously, not the disadvantages. Again, my apologies. I did what I believed was appropriate for a guy to do, and I felt keeping her responsible was appropriate. But it's as if everything I did. All of it meant nothing. And IT broken me a little. She flung it aside, leaving me to pick up the bits. Is it wrong for me to feel this way?